Welcome back to U.S. Cellular Field, and the Sox have had a lot of luck against the Tampa Bay Rays. They've beaten them five of seven. You see the batting average, the run scored. The biggest difference is the ERA at 305 as opposed to 561. The interesting part of the series: five games decided by one run, including all three in the first three games of this series. So hopefully the Sox come out on top as Detroit is winning big early in the game in Detroit. So the Southwest starting lineup for the Rays. It's Upton leading off, then Crawford, Longoria, Pena, Zobras, Pat Burrell, Kapler, Hernandez behind the plate, and Jason Bartlett having a banner year playing shortstop and hitting ninth. The lowest defensive setup and how they'll line up behind Mark Burley left to right is Quentin Posednik and Die. In the infield, Beckham, Ramirez, Nixon, Field. Castro behind the plate. And Mark Burley looking for win number 11 on the hill. He's the U.S. Cellular starting pitcher. Mark having a fine year. This is 20th start. ERA in the mid threes. Only 26 walks in 125 innings. And as you can see, left-handed, right-handed, doesn't matter. They hit him equally the same. But he does take away a running game, and that's one of the things you have to do against Tampa. Game time conditions, 74 beautiful degrees. It's 58% humidity. The wind out of the north at 5 to 10 miles an hour, and it is partly sunny. The umpires today behind the plate, Eric Cooper. At first base, Mike Riley. Chuck Merriweather is at second, and Laz Diaz is at third. So as Mark Burley gets ready to face B.J. Upton, I'll turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Bob Carrollson. All right, Stone Pony, thank you and once again. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet finale of this four-game set and finale of this seven-game homestand. Sox, of course, took two out of three from Baltimore. So B.J. Upton, Upton gets ready to hit, coming in hitting at 240 as there's first ball hunting, hitting, and one. That's such a figure that Tampa's going to do with Mark Burley. They know that he usually gets a first ball over the plate, a lot like him facing Greg Maddox, where you know he tried to throw strike one. So you went after him early in the count. You better get good ones early. Here's Carl Crawford hitting a 313, nine homers. He's driven in 41. Takes first pitch strike. Tampa Bay comes in nine over at 52 and 43, five and a half games back. Crawford's going to back it down. Back foot almost out of that box. Part of it is. Crawford three for eight with an inside to park home run in this series. And count one and two. Rays come in hitting at 270 as a club with a 4.15 ERA. Crawford is one of the guys on this team who just killed Mark Burley. One of the reasons he's hit him very well is he normally will hit the ball to left or left center field against left hand. Little comebacker. And that is out number two. Eighth meeting of the year between these two clubs. First seven Sox have taken five. Rays are 22 and 28 on the road, but 30 and 15 at Tropicana Field. They come into action today, five and a half games in back of the Yankees. First pitch strike to Longoria. They've been hitting at 275, 19 homers, 72 driven in. And there's the back door. Very quickly to count 0 and 2. And that's up high. Longoria one for nine in this series, and it was a home run, a long home run. He gone. One, two, three for Burley after a half inning of play. It's a raise, nothing, and the good guys coming to back. Starting lineup for the Sox. Danny Pasednik leading it off and having a great year. Alexi Ramirez in the two spot, then Jermaine Dye, Paul Canerco, Carlos Quinton moving up in the batting order today with Gordon Beckham, Jason Nix, Ramon Castro, and Josh Field playing first base in inning nine. 
Most defensive setup behind Casper, left to right. Crawford, Upton, and Kapler in the infield. Longoria, Bartlett, Zobris, and Pena. Hernandez behind the plate. And Casimir on the hill. He's a game under 500 with a high ERA. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours as first pitch inside. Scotty Pods hitting at 306, four homers. He's driven in 26. There's a strike in the count. He was the one. Sox come in at 49 and 45, one game back of the Tigers. And the Tigers losing early in that one, one to nothing to Seattle. Al's that pitch back from the 25 year old southpaw out of Tampa, Florida. For whatever reason, Casper's had a lot more difficulty with left handers than right handers. 33 points higher they're hitting. That's surprising because he normally has pretty good stuff. One two pitch. One out. That tried to run up on that one but got it over the outside corner. And run up and take doesn't work quite as well as run up and slap it to the left side. Here's Alexei, 4 for 11 in the series, hitting at 279 with 11 homers and 46 knocked in. He just missed that one. High in the left field. Two down. So with two out, let's check out our Heineken picks to click this afternoon. Command Joe, our Hall of Fame director and crew, well, they're going with Carlos Quentin, Lisa, Layla, Steve, they're going to go with Gordon Beckham. And Jeff and Tim Shearer, all the great folks on Lost Dunes, but Richmond, Richmond, Michigan. We're going to go with Jason Nix. Well, I've been consistent. I'm behind everywhere we brought this. But I'm about ready to put on you. a big second half run. You uh, got to work hard. <laughs> First pitch outside. <laughs> To Jermaine hitting at 297, 21 homers, 60 driven in. That's outside. Jermaine, 5 for 7 lifetime. Check that 5 for 17 lifetime against Casimir with a couple of home runs. Casimir throws from the extreme third base side of the mound, which is unusual for left handers. I didn't like to face left handed pitching, but I loved it a lot more when he came from the third base side. Well, one of the things in the scouting report with Casimir is that he likes to throw to his glove side, which is inside to right handers, outside to left handers. Checks it up, takes a strike. And that's unusual because the strong side of most pitchers, not all of them, but most of them, is the arm side, which in his case is. Away to the right handers into the left handers. Whatever Casimir is doing, he's not doing it well because his ERA is in the 660s. That ball high in the left field. Off speed pitch out in front, and that's a quick one, two, three inning. So after one, no score. That was the matchup back on April 18th at Tropicana Field. It was early in the season. Both guys struck out the exact same amount. Casmer didn't have control, consequently he lost. Mark Burley won. But that game will have no effect on this one. Carlos Pena, Ben Zobrist, and Pat Burrow. First ball hanging. That's close up here. Oh, I thought we were going to make that. I thought we were going to have that. First one of the year. Just a little too far. Just too far away. Pena one for seven in the series with an RBI, hitting a 224 on the season, 24 homers. He's driven in 60, takes a curveball strike. And Mark's thrown a lot of strikes early. In fact, because it is a little bit warmer than normal, he seems to be throwing more strikes and working just as quickly as he always works. And if it's close, Eric Cooper's calling it, which I love. Especially if he's got a tight connection someplace. Yeah, they don't 
my charter like we do. <laughs> The 0 2. A little bit high. And here at beautiful US Cellular Field, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. Checked it up in the count, 2 and 2. Pena, 11 for 37 lifetime off Burley with a homer. Mark is trying to get him to swing at that high fastball. So far, he's resisted the temptation on a pitch that he can't hit. Pretty good pitch right there. Didn't get it. Ramon wants it outside. Mark cuts it. The ball right caught to the front corner. Right to the glove. And that's the pitch that. Early's been trying to get him with most of the at bat. High fastball, just above the letters. Something that a guy with an uppercut swing doesn't really have too much of a swing at. Once again, the payoff. <laughs> High pop up. Gosh, I'm wondering. And that's out number one. John Danks is watching the game at home and Mark Burley before the game decided that he was going to send a little message to his left handed counterpart. J.D. Fifth. To his good friend and his mentor. Johnny sits beside Mark they talk pitching. Mark's Told him just about everything he knows. I, I couldn't think of a better guy I know with it. Clayton Richard and John Danks to come in as young left handers and talk to Burley about how he gets it done. I think one of the things for Mark Burley is just don't overthink it. Well, keep it simple. And I think that's oh, you don't have to really have any conversation with Burley, just watch it. Danks has better stuff. Richard has better stuff. But yet Burley is a man and you say why? Well, just again, the mouth lies, the eyes don't. Checks it up on the change and okay. account two and two. If both of those young left-handers wind up 40 plus over 500 for their careers, they will have been very successful, as has Mark Burley. Foul tip. Sox will conclude the series as homestand. Head on over to Detroit. Split doubleheader tomorrow, then Saturday and Sunday games. And on to Minnesota. So a seven game road trip coming up between the Tigers and the Twins. Yes, he did. He gone. What Mark's doing today real well is he's changing eye levels. He's keeping the ball down with the change, and then he goes upstairs with the fastball. He'll throw a little cutter outside to right handers then he'll cut one in on their hands and by changing location and especially eye level up and down they do a good job. Well the, the whole key of that scenario is keeping the change up now. That's the whole key. That's why we talk about Johnny Danks. When Johnny keeps his change up down he wins. When he keeps his change up when he has his change up to stay up he loses. It's just about that simple. You miss, you got to miss now. Earl, two for nine in the series with a homer. Two out, two balls, two strikes. The ball hit deep in the right center field. The main, yes. It is six up, six down for Burley, and we still have no score. No score, bottom of the second inning. 
couple of good left-handers out there. One having a good year, the other one struggling a little bit. And certainly Mark Burley is having a terrific year, trying to win his 11th game of the year. And for whatever reason, Casimir, who's had it's about as good a stuff as anybody, has really struggled this year. So we'll have to hope those struggles continue. Canerco, Quentin, and Beckham. Holly at 296, 18 homers, 64 RBIs. Seven for 15 lifetime off Casimir with a couple of homers. Outfield, for the most part, straight up, spread out. Mongoria backing off the line at third. Ball hit hard. All it is is just a strike. It took a little something off his fastball and made it look exactly like his regular fastball and had Paul out in front of it. Now Kazmir the sixth on the list for most strikeouts by a left-hander before the age of 25. He's also had some forearm and elbow issues during the course of his young career and I've seen him already stretching the fingers of his pitching hand out after he makes a delivery. Sometimes that's indicative of getting occasional forearm cramps. The one two pitch. There's a nice piece of hitting right there. Well, that's that high change you talked about. Yep, you get it up, it's going to get hit hard. Gasper thought he set him up. And that high change up. Lines up a base hit, and once again, he stretches out the fingers of his pitching hand as he came back after getting the ball from the middle infielders. Here's Carlos. Quentin hitting at 232, eight long ones. He's driven in 20. Three for 11 in this series, and one for six lifetime against Casimir. Starts him off with a change, low and away. Last night we saw Chad Bradford come on and have some back issues. Today they disabled him. They called up Dale Thayer from Triple A Durham. Another change up. That one grabs a strike. He even accounted one. Thanks to Carlos, one for six against Casimir lifetime. Well, that one hit left the premises. It's also mentioned that Casimir, though sixth on the all-time list, left-handers with the most strikeouts before the age of 25. Sam McDowell, sudden Sam McDowell, number one, which is no surprise. Fernando Valenzuela, number two. Frank Tanana, when he that was before he hurt his arm. Al Neuheiser, Vita Blue, and Scott Casimir. Pretty good others below them as well. That's low. After Casimir, Kenny Holtzman, then CC Sabathia, Mike McCormick, and Don Gullett. I would have thought that Herb's score would have been in there somewhere. Herb, probably back in those days, didn't get to the big lakes as early as these guys, even though he was young. And there's ball four, so the first two men aboard. But Ted Williams, flatly, I mean, just no hesitation. I asked him one day, who's the best stuff you've ever seen? He said, Herb School, right off the bat. Well, they do something different than most teams, and that is that instead of Longoria at third giving the signs in a possible bunt situation with Rose at first and second, which is what most teams do, this team uses Pena at first base. It was Pena who looked into the dugout, flashed the signals to the rest of the infield, and then verbally told Kazmir if he wants him to charge straight ahead or charge toward the line, and that'll mean that Longoria is going to stay back at third. Beckham swings and misses at that fastball. I've always thought it was 
actually much better for the first baseman to do it because the most important communication you can have right there is between the pitcher and the first baseman rather than the pitcher and the third baseman. That's the most important communication you can have. And in this situation, he goes back. Plus, you got a youngster over there in Longoria. You got the veteran, True. outstanding first baseman in Pena. And that's outside. If Pena was playing third and Longoria was playing first, they would probably have Pena, the third baseman, making the calls. Well, he's got a few gold gloves on his mantle. And the man you're looking at right now is going to be about as good as it gets at third. Out of way up high. Don't help him out. Two and one. Jason Nix on deck. Beckham hitting at 299, three homers. He's driven in 23. Four for nine in this series. And the count evens at two. Kesmer originally came up with the New York Mets. Was a highly thought of prospect. They, however, could not live without Victor Zambrano. So Kesmer went to the Tampa Bay Rays. Good eye. Beckham. A remarkable eye for a youngster. Talked to him after the game last night because that two out walk that he got started that three run seventh. He looked at me, he smiled, he said, Those were close pitches, weren't they? I said, Yeah, he does. He just took them like Ted Williams. He never even offered at any of them. No. Payoff pitch. Jason's ball four there. One out, and that'll bring up Nix. Jason hitting at 226, six homers, 12 knocked in. I feel playing straight away, not overly deep. And let's see if Jason continues his trend, his pattern. Breaking ball strike. Usually it's a fastball that he'll take for a strike. First pitch. He wants to talk to Hernandez about pitch selection. It might be that he doesn't want him setting up too early because he doesn't want Paul Canerco at second base to give location to Knicks. Take a look at this first pitch again. There's a breaking ball, and you can see Hernandez crossed up. He was That's looking when he went out there he, to talk to him about. He was looking for something fast, and he got a curve. Oh, he had a cookie right there and couldn't do anything with it. Oh, and to the count. And a fastball, letter high and out over the plate. Fouled it straight back. Took that pitch nicely. The ball, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the second. One hit in the game that by Canerco. All he had set, Quentin at first. That one at 92. What's the, have you seen him top 92? No, 92 is about where he's going to top out. He occasionally, in the scouting report, they said that they've seen him hit as high as 94, but. That's really a rarity. He's going to well, pitch anywhere from 88 to 92. In his first couple of years, he threw an easy 95. Yep. So he's lost two or three miles an hour on his fastball with those injuries. Uh, that's shanked. 
Everyone at 91, but he was easy. I mean, he was like almost like Matt Thornton out there. But Matt's the easiest 96, 97 you want to see. He was the easiest 95, 96 you want to see. That's what happens a lot to guys. When they hurt their arm, they come back with, in the same neighborhood of velocity, what they lose is the late movement. Just got a piece of that one. Hitters don't care how hard you throw at your straight. Well, that's one of the reasons why Greg Maddox goes into the Hall of Fame. Guys that throw a little different. Bob Gibson goes in because the ball just darts at the last instant. It doesn't stay on the same plane. He was one of the few right-handers that threw hard down low. Time is call. In fact, the two hardest right-handers I've ever seen they threw hard down low. You see a lot of right-handers throw hard up high. Jim Maloney in order. Jim Maloney first of Cincinnati and Bob Gibson. Seaver kept the ball down a lot. Yeah, but he hard. threw real hard up high. But not uh, real not hard. Not like those guys. Two, two. Good eye, good, good take. So a full count, Casimir. This will be the 33rd pitch, just an inning and a third. It bodes well. You can keep working him hard, but we got to put him away with. So he goes 3 2 on Beckham, strikes him out, goes 3 2 on Nick, strikes him out. Book a White Sox group outing or party area today. Save on each ticket for a group of 20 or more fans, whether it's the warning track, fan deck, or individual game diamond suites, they're all available. Book a group outing or party area today by calling 312 674 1000 or visit WhiteSox.com. Ramon Castro, come on, Ramon, right man, right spot, right place. Good rip, looking for it, got it. That one at 93. Alone four for 30. Since being acquired from the Mets with a couple of home runs. Oh, and to the count. But again, even if we don't score here, it's been a good inning for us. Get that lineup turned over, make him throw in a lot of pitches. And there's a base hit. They're going to have to hold Canerco as Crawford will get it back in. So that will load him up. For Josh Fields. Oh, two mistake as Kesmer gets that ball up. And Ramon gets on top of it. Drills it into left field. Crawford wasn't overly deep, and this ball is hit so hard that there's really no thought of trying to score with Paul Canerco. Right here, we need. Some contact from Josh. Even though they have two outs, just need him to put it in play. He's 0 for 3 in this series, and all three times, strikeouts. And don't help him out. Well, control has been a big issue with Kazmir this year. Good pitch to hit and fouls it back right side. With the base is loaded. Josh has had a good run at. It. 
All things considered, not much speed on the bases. Attaboy, Josh. Big difference then. 2 1 and 1 2. Huge. Nice to discuss. Pena coming out, and he wants a word with Casimir. You can see the 31st pitch about to be made as Casimir's mechanics aren't real sharp right now, and I would assume if he doesn't get field, you see Jim Hickey come out. I won't help him out. That ball hit deep. Way back, Crawford looks up, you can put it on the board. Yes, yeah, grand slam homer for Josh Fields, and the Sox take a quick 4 nothing lead. I don't think Carlos Pena went out and said to him, Want to throw one down the middle here at three and one. That's home run number seven. RBIs 27, 28, 29, and 30 as Josh Fields gets a fastball. It's out over the plate. And he takes it out for a big early lead for Mark Burley. First pitch strike. <coughs> Excuse me. I stripped a gear. <laughs> oh, and one to count to Scott. Who struck out? Breaking ball and the count 0 and 2. A little chopper. The damage is done. Kashmir loads him up, and Josh Fields unloads him with that grand slam. Sox lead at 4 zip. August 1st, the White Sox host the Yankees. The first 20,000 adults, age 21 and over, receive a beer vendor bobblehead presented by Miller Lite. Miller Lite, great taste, less filling. First pitch down low to Gabe Kapler. Early has retired the first six. Rays in order, and he has himself a 4 nothing lead. There's the strike on the outside corner. Kapler hitting at 256. Four homers, he's driven in 23. Gabe, seven for 32 lifetime off Mr. Burley. Another strike in that change. And the count two and two. You can see Kapler has made his living hitting off the left handers. That's one of the reasons why. Joe Madden likes him on the ball club because left handers as a rule give this Tampa team some problems. That's foul right back underneath stone point. That's the end of the gap 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 Carlos yes. First, Carlos broke back and realized that ball was hit off the end of the bat and wasn't going to carry all that far. And then he went over and made the play. Seven up, seven down. Here's Hernandez, the catcher, hitting at 256 with a homer, and he's knocked in 11. Take strike one. 4 3 and 0 for our Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors for their Rays. Fouled over into the Sox dugout. Count very quickly, nothing in two. Nand has been around a long time, started his professional career in 1998. Alexei, that time, no speed. Two down. Wow. We have a moment. I want to sound a big White Sox 
happy birthday to a big Sox fan of Dryden, Ontario, Canada. Mike Burr, 23 years old today. Huge Sox fan. So happy birthday, Mike. Jason Bartlett comes in hitting at 342. Eight homers, 40 knocked in. And that's a can of corn into left field. So that's going to be nine up, nine down for Burley. And it is still 4 nothing. good guy. Make every home game a double play at U.S. Cellular Field this season with two ballpark hot dogs for the price of one. Visit an all-star concession stand during the first hour after gates open. For White Sox individual game tickets, call 866-SOX-GAME or visit WhiteSox.com. Alexei Ramirez will lead it off here in the bottom of the third. 4-0 White Sox. Alexei popped up to left field. Next first pitch strike. Beautiful day here in the beautiful city. Had him out in front on the change and the count one and two. He's also speeded up his delivery between pitches, which is something that might have been suggested by his pitching coach, Jim Hickey. Well, Burley is the fastest worker in the major league. Carlos Torres last night had pretty good rhythm going. He was he's quick. Burley's in as he turns that one over. It's way outside. Burley's in class by himself in that, in that category. There's no doubt he wants to get the ball. He wants to throw it. He doesn't want the hitter to get set. And all he wants from his catcher, whoever it might be, is get the ball back to him. And then he'll get it and throw it back to you. Another left-hander way back win. He worked about as quick as Burley was getting Ted Bosch. That's out of play. Right side souvenir. And then of course if you want to go to some right handers. Catfish Hunter got it and threw it. But I think probably the fastest working right hander. Was Bob Gibson. Maddox was right up there. Greg Maddox wanted the ball right back from the catcher. And he didn't stray from the mound. And he get it. And Gibson was another guy that didn't let you get set. He didn't want the catcher coming out ever. <laughs> ever. All speed reaches out hooks it foul. We're going to show you a couple of shots of Scott Kazmir as he keeps on stretching out his left arm. And he's been doing it quite a bit. He did it between innings. And I'm not sure if it's 100 percent or not but. It's indicative of getting some forearm cramps. And there's ball four. So the leadoff walk. And here's Jermaine. He popped up to left field his first trip. Esmer has nine wild pitches this year. So a lot of pressure falls to Michael Hernandez. First pitch strike to JD. Top of the sixth at Comerica Park, still 1 0 Seattle. Over the Tigers. Hit him on the fist, pops him up. Could be trouble. Capper coming on, makes the catch. Nice play by the 33 year old veteran outfielder. Gabe Kapler has never had any problems laying out. This is a guy who hustles every minute he's on the field and has since the day he got into Major League Baseball. That's a fine effort there because that ball could have easily have fallen. And that's also a good way to break your wrist. 
Good job by Mike Riley getting out there to make sure it was not trapped. And here's Paulie. Paulie started off that four run second with a solid single to right on the changeup up out over the plate. Fouls that 91 mile an hour fastball back. Seattle has added their lead. Always good here. Two nothing. And that ball hit into center field. Two down. Well, that catch by Kepler right there will be huge. It changes the whole inning around here oh, if he doesn't make that time. play. Big time. Well, now you got a man on first and third with just one out if he can't get it. And here's Quentin. He walked last inning. the center field. Ball was about a 32nd of an inch from being right over that fence. Meanwhile, we're into the fourth. It is still 4-0. White Sox. Top of the order here in the top of the fourth. Upton, Crawford, and Longoria. Face Mark Burley. Upton hit the first pitch of the ball game. Jason Nix at second. Pitch high in the count, two and zero. Oh. Upton made the decision to swing at a fastball if he got it, and he got one that looked to be up and out of the strike zone. Swung anyway. Two and two, the count. Good try, just off the plate, full. The thing that makes this changeup so good is that he cuts that fastball inside. Yeah. He gone. And now it's time for the duck. As he waddles by, we will ask you who are the three players in Rays history that have driven in 100 plus runs in consecutive seasons. Crawford hit a comebacker to Burley. Fouls that breaking pitch back. Think about Ramon Castro. He's putting the numbers down in a hurry. And Mark hasn't bothered shaking him off. Puts whatever he wants down. Mark just throws it to the glove. It was a real good pitch after cutting that fastball in. That straight change away, and Upton had no chance. In the left field, Carlos. Two down. That'll bring up Longoria, who struck out on a good changeup, low and away. That wasn't the whole story in that strikeout. It was a sequence. Not so much you got two strikes, but how you got the two strikes. Back on the back door. I talked to Evan, and he was a shortstop that they decided to move to third base. That was in college, and certainly has adapted well. Shot. That's 12 up, 12 down, and it is still 4 nothing. Good guys. Treat your group of 50 to 100 fans to a pregame patio party buffet, and then enjoy the game from the warning track area. Call 312-674-1000 to book your warning track party today. Or visit WhiteSox.com for more details. And every time I think of the warning track, I think of the Bertucci boys and those spectacular ribs they send up here. Of course, I prefer the burgers, but the ribs are special. They're awesome. The Bertucci boys. 
And well dressed, might I add. Oh, Toriel, get me. <laughs> Orton won the count to Gordon, who struck out his first trip on a. There's a fly ball, a little semi line drive in the left, one out. And that'll bring up Jason Nix, also a strikeout victim. One of three registered thus far. By Casimir. First pitch strike. Change up, low and away. One and one to Knicks. For Tampa, this is the second stop of a three city, 10 game road trip. Started in Kansas City, here for four, and then they go to Toronto for three. Big motion, another change. Big hat, no cattle. I remember that. I met a few of those folks for. And that's popped up. Kapler making the call the dive, calling off Zobrist, who was standing underneath it. <laughs> well, it looked like Upton could have had it. Certainly Zobrist could have had it. The last guy that should have caught it was Kapler. Yeah, and he comes flying into the picture. <laughs> we'll take another look at it. It's a flying Kapler. <laughs> oh, man. Zobrist is calling for it all the way until. Kepler turns it into a routine play that turns into a highlight reel kick. Yeah. Here's Castro. That's one of those that tonight when they show that on. <laughs> what an outstanding They're going to say, what in the world was Upton and Zobras <laughs> doing on that play? They didn't want to get taken out for the rest of the season. Big hit last inning or take that the second inning by Castro. Interesting play because Kapler's not in the picture. Zobris is calling for it. He's got it all the way. And then long came Gabe. Well, he just wants to play. He just wants to be included. He's not out there on an everyday basis. When you just don't face that many left-handers, and he gets his opportunity, so he wants to make the most of it. I want to play too. The two-two. It's full. Call for base hit. Josh Fields on deck. And that's ball three. So here's Josh. If you missed his at bat in the second inning, poof. Sack pack with socks. 3 1 count. Got a fastball right there and hit it way out. That's the 12th home run that Casimir's given up this year. He places him third on the team. Comes right at him. Esmer's only average a touch over five innings per start. That's not real good even in this day and age because that means your bullpen comes into play most of the time and a lot of it has to do with throwing a lot of pitches and getting to the point where he just doesn't have a whole lot left. This would be the 71st pitch here in three and two thirds. It's understandable if he's been doing that his other starts why he's only going. That's also one of the reasons why that ERA is 662.
this is a guy that's had a winning record four years in a row. And granted, they were very good last year, but they were very bad the previous three years, and he still had a winning record. A ball high in the center field. He just missed this one. Upton makes the catch. That'll retire the side. We're into the fifth. Four nothing Sox. Carlos Pena will lead it off here in the top of the fifth inning. Four nothing Sox. It'll be Pena, Zobrist, and Burl to face Mark Burley. Pena fouled out to Josh Fields. Takes a strike on the outside corner. That batting average for Pena is almost irrelevant because they look to him to drive in runs. Hit the ball out of the ballpark, drive in runs, and batting average doesn't mean very much. Well, if he hits 30, 35, 40 home runs, drives in 100, they don't care if he hits 200. And that's what he'll do. He'll hit a little bit of 230s, 240s probably, but. He'll drive in 115 and hit 35. That's one reason I like Joe Madden as a manager. He gets with his players, talks to them on an individual basis, tells them what he expects of them on an individual basis. And then if they do their individual thing, then collectively it works out. Early is over there like it should be. We had a discussion about this, I don't know, last month sometime, about how managers in years past, they would tell you in spring training, Steve, look, this is what I want from you, buddy. I want, I want 225 innings out of this year. I don't care how you give them to me. I want you to give me 225 innings. I don't care what your record is, but I need those innings out of you because our bullpen's a little short. And if you know what you need to do, most guys, when a manager shows that kind of confidence in you, they're going to respond. Exactly. That's one. If there's a ground ball backhanded by Alexi, right over the top of gun in time, so Zobris. Nice play by Alexi. Two down. And then from a hitter, all right, Hawk, this is what I want you to do. I want you to hit 25 home runs. I want you to drive in 75 runs. I don't care what you hit. If you do that with our pitching staff, we're going to be in good shape. They would they would tell you what you they expected. And you're right, that gave you some accountability. It gave you the freedom to go, okay, this is what I've got to do. And he also knew that if they were looking at anywhere in the 225, 200 to 225, you didn't have to be looking over your shoulder because you weren't coming out of the game. Well, that's the whole thing about the accountability. They gave you the responsibility, the accountability. And you give me the 225. That's what I want from you. There's a strike for Burl and the count one and two. He went out deep to right center. Breaking ball low. Today the Rays have really very little choice in their approach because if they take the first pitch, it's going to be strike one. If they swing at it, it's been an out. He gone. That is 15 up, 15 down for Burley. It'll be the top of the order. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Knox lead it four to nothing. Grand slam homer by Josh Fields in the second. Hides 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a ground out to short. And that's fair ball right down the line. Kapler quickly gets it back in, so the leadoff double, that's his 12th two bagger. Sednick was looking for a fastball in. He got one right there. This is actually in off the plate. But he turned on it, brought the hands in, took it right down the line, and kept it fair. Pretty good job of hitting and a promising way to start out this fifth inning. Here's Alexei. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. Well, that was an excellent job by Pods right there to keep that ball fair. Alexei trying to take it to the right side. Invariably, in this situation, last year we saw it, and this year, when you got a guy with a pretty good fastball, and Alexei is trying to take it to the right side, he fouls it back with swings and misses. That'll 
get the job done and get the run in. Don't anybody touch it down there. You go. So back to back doubles, and it is five nothing. RBI number 47. So trying to do the right thing, take the ball to the right side, turns into gold for Alexi. And turns into the fifth run. This is a high fastball. And Ramirez just thinking right field all the way, slices it right down the line. You saw Pena playing well off the line. And it is a promising hit. And here's Jermaine. He's trying to get him over. Well, the thing about that, Alexi fouled that first one back. It was almost a blueprint of the second. And he can stay on top of that second after seeing the first one. Outfield, for the most part, straight up. Another effort, good effort, trying to get him over right there. Now you got to just make some contact up there, 23. I five and zero oh for us. No runs, no hits, no errors for them. It was nice very, block. very nearly the tenth wild pitch of the year for Casimir. Michael Hernandez able to knock it down, let it roll in front, and stay right with it as Lance Cormier was in here for the bullpen. Over into the Sox dugout. The other count hangs at one and two. Long look in at Hernandez by Casimir. That's out number one. So here's Pauly. He's one for two with a run scored. Upton moving over a few steps to his right, over towards Crawford and left. On the outside corner. Runners in scoring position. Ball has been in the top 10 in the American League all season. Currently occupying the seventh spot. 266 with runners in scoring position. Pretty impressive. That ball hammered in the left field. Crawford is there. Makes the catch. That's the hang with him for Pauly. And we'll deal with our Aflac question. For the three players in Rays history that have driven in 100 plus Aflac. runs in consecutive seasons. And the answer Fred McGriff, Aubrey Huff, and Carlos Pena. One of those guys will be traded before the deadline. You figure out which one. There's Quentin. He has walk scored. And he just missed one, a high towering drive into center field. That was back in the third inning. Off the end of the bat, on the changeup, bare handed by Zobris. They get him, so the 
Back to back doubles by Pides and Alexi puts one on the board. We'll go to the six leading 5 0. Top of the sixth inning, lower third of their order as Mark Burley has retired the first 15 he has seen, Stone Pony. Well, he's throwing as well as he can possibly throw. One of the big secrets is getting ahead of just about everybody, and if you get ahead of them, then they start swinging at the first pitch. Nice. One out. A good effort by Gordon because he realized he couldn't let that big hop play him, so he came in, smothered it, and made the play. He's getting a little better feel for third base these days. It takes a while for youngsters to get used to the speed of the game at the major league level. And to understand the hops because a lot of times. Well that's understanding the speed. Yeah. If you can understand the speed then you can gauge the hops. You can make your own hop. A lot of guys get up here called up from the minor leagues. The Gordon's case just out of college. And ask him to play a new position. Yeah, I mean it's it's especially one that's shorter. Now, if you ask him, if he's a third baseman, you ask him to go to short. That's an easier transition. Nice pick right there. Two down. This time, moving to his left. But the same smother of the short hop. Again, picking out his own hop and doing a nice job of it. The things you might want to watch is the bunt from Bartlett because he realizes that nobody's gotten on and he is a pretty good bunter. Breaking ball high. He's 0 for 1, one out to left field. That's pretty much what he's done this entire series, trying to pull everything. Hitting at 341 as he stands up to that dish. Tacks it up in the count 3 0. Oh. There's one. Up on their feet. Good change up, and Bartlett just able to stay alive. Good job by Burley coming back from the 3 0 to get in. Yes, that is 18 up, 18 down for Mark Burley. It is still 5 0 Sox. It's time to bring you up to speed with the ATT Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Throwing away, first pitch to Gordon Beckham leading off here in the bottom of the sixth. Gordon 0 for 2. 5 nothing White Sox. As that is a high pop-up. Painion. First 25,000 fans in attendance at each home game will receive a Connie's Pizza game card. You can buy one pizza, get the second pizza half off. One out to Jason Nix. Jason's 0 for 2. Last time up with a little flare in the right field that Gabe Kappel came. 
charging in full layout made the catch front layout. First pitch strike. And for the first time, the bullpen up and going for the Rays. And that hit him. So Nix, good speed aboard. He's five for five in stolen bases. And that'll bring up Ramon Castro. That one just hits a piece of him right on the White Sox logo. On the left bicep. There's Jim Hickey calling to see if his bullpen is ready. Castro is perfect on the afternoon. A big single. Back in the second inning. And coming with two out. That loaded the bases. And that set up the grand slam homer by Josh Fields. He also has walked. Change up. And the count one and one. This is exactly what Casimir has averaged as you look at Cormier going into 10. Five and a third innings for this entire season. That's been it for him. High and that's a souvenir left side. I would think if Ramon doesn't ground into a double play, that Joe Madden doesn't want to see him face field. Not only did he hit a grand slam, the last time up he hit a ball to center field that just missed going out of the ballpark. Comes back with a fastball. A ball, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the six. Get that grand slam in the second. Picked up another one last inning. Back to back doubles by Pesednik and Ramirez. Change up. And the count two and two. Fox conclude this series, this homestand, for their charter, head on out to Detroit. Split doubleheader tomorrow. Calls him out on that change. That ball was up and out of the strike zone. I guess. And I can't believe he said that Ramon swung at it because it didn't appear that he did. I guess it was. A real good call that time by Eric Cooper. <laughs> that wasn't even in the vicinity of the strike zone. It's a neighborhood call. So here's Josh. Starts him off with a changeup. But that split doubleheader tomorrow. First game at 12.05 Central. Jose Contreras against Justin Verlander. That game right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Now game two will be 6.05 Central time. As you check out our Felco upcoming schedule. Bartolo Colon against Eddie Bonai. And that game over WCIU Channel 26. Comes back with a fastball. One and one. Then on Saturday, a 3-10 central start. Gavin Floyd against Edwin Jackson. That game will be over Fox. And on Sunday, Evening, 7:05 Central start to be announced for us against Porcello. Over Porcello for them. And that game over ESPN. Well, there's a man that is really tense. He's 
got to be the loosest fellow around. That change up. Hit into left field and that'll retire the side. We'll go to the seventh. Burley has retired everybody he has seen 18 in a row. In our Cabot Woodstain legendary performance, we flash back to 2002 on this day when big hurt Frank Thomas took a Johan Santana offering 495 feet to left field, making it the longest home run at that time at U.S. Cellular Field. It now ranks as the second longest ever to be hit at this ballpark. That's our Cabot Woodstain legendary performance. And that ball is just foul. Thank you very much off the bat of B.J. Upton. As Diaz took a look at it. That ball was hooking and wound up about eight inches foul. Not going to play gimmies with you on the golf course. Well, that's outside in the count two and one. Upton has grounded to second and struck out. There's a chopper. And that is out number one. Carl Crawford has bounced back to Burley and gone out to left. That strike evens accounted one. Sox with four in the second. The grand slam homer by Josh Fields, if you're just tuning in. Added one in the fifth. Just off the corner. We need one of those Ramon Castro calls here. Another little comeback. Two down. So here's Evan Longoria struck out on a good change up in the first then he lined out hard in the fourth to end that end. In the right field Jermaine die. Yes. Twenty one up twenty one down. Seventh inning stretch Burley has it going. If you can't watch your White Sox on Comcast Sportsnet, you can always catch the game on your computer with MLB.tv. It's the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 out of market games a week live on your computer. For more details, visit WhiteSox.com, where baseball is always on. And Lance Cormier comes into the game, so that's it for Casimir, who goes six innings, five runs on five hits. Cormier on for the 28th time. He's had a very good year. And he comes in with a five run deficit. Hides one for three a double and a run scored. Takes down low ball one. Bottom of the eighth in Detroit Seattle leading two to one. Tigers still hitting. There's the strike to even accounted one. Checks it up. Now feel just about straight away for Scotty Pods. Count even at two. Mm -hmm. 
Full count. The Sednik has done such a good job leading off. Back to back doubles in the fifth inning. So Sednik and Ramirez led to the fifth run. Well, he has been outstanding. The hits and caroms right over. Boy, you're talking about a hang wiffle. That's it. That ball was scalded right back through the middle. Caroms right over to Pena. Now we have to see if Cormier is okay because that got him flush. That one didn't hit the shoe that got most of the ankle, I believe. That's what it looked like from here. Yep. This is a Mercedes Benz D class attention assist of the game. A rocket up the middle. And it goes right at Pena for a very painful 1 3 put out. They're still looking at him as Sednik robbed of a base hit, but that's a very painful way to record an out. It might be all right right now, but it won't be later on. Ouch. That got him right off the left ankle bone. I think it's the long pants that protect it. He says he's all right. So that'll bring up Alexei, who's one for two with a, an RBI double. straight up and that's foul back that one got a piece of Eric Cooper and up the dirt on the foul tip looks like he got something in the right eye Alexei popped up to left his first at bat walked in the third in that Double as there is a shot base hit. So good speed aboard. He is 12 for 15 and stolen bases. That one stayed right over the middle of the plate, and Alexi, who hits just about anybody's fastball, drills it into left field. Here's Jermaine, 0 for 3 today. Decent lead. Pitch outside. Seattle got out of that eighth inning and retained the lead. They gave one run back. They had a tying run on the third, but it was two outs. Nice pick by Hernandez. And the count 2 0 with Canerco on deck. Hernandez had a good day behind the plate. He stopped. A lot of would be wild pitches. Pretty good numbers against Cormier, so Jermaine was pretty happy when Joe Madden went to the pen. A little quick on that one. 5 6 and 0 oh for our guys. No runs, no hits, no errors for their guys. You're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Mark Burley is retired 21 to go. Probably the only time in real danger. 3 0 on Bartlett to end the sixth inning. Came back and got him on a ground ball. Cleveland beat Toronto 5 4 up in Canada. Full count. And the Mariners.
Rangers hitting in the top of the ninth. Leading two to one. Over the Tigers. All four base hit. There goes Alexei. There's a ground ball to Hopper down to Pondoria. So two down. And here comes Canerco. Pauly. One for three, but he swung the bat well today. Last time up hit a bullet. In the left field right at Carl Croft. Seattle's trying to stay afloat in the West. Angels finally have turned it on. They've won nine of their last ten, their last five in a row, and they put a little daylight between themselves and Texas. Seattle came into play today, five and a half games in back of the Angels. Now Texas won four in a row. Texas swept the Red Sox. Pretty good trick. Yeah. That's what pushed, along with six in a row won by the Yankees, it pushed the Red Sox two games in back of New York. Pick him up right here, 14. He's got the catbird seat, two and nothing. Carlos Quentin on deck. Sox trying to make it a five and two homestand. Took two out of three from Baltimore. Take three out of four from Tampa Bay. There's the strike, two and one. Mark will talk it up. Let everybody in that dugout know that he's got a perfect game going. Not all that superstitious, huh? No. Well, when you've already had the no-hitter, might as well add the perfect game to your resume as long as you've gone this far. It's just amazing how how he and Cat are so close together. They have the same personality. That's what Cat used to be when he had something good going. He'd come in and say, "You guys know what I got going here?" <laughs> and that Southern North Carolina drawl he had. Burley last time. After about seven, said, walked in the dugout and said, hey, I got a no-hitter going, guys. They were probably fairly well aware of that at that point. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> his teammates know what to expect of him now. I've never seen two, two players alike more than Mark Burley and Jim Hunter. They chop it one hopper. Gloria you get plenty of time, takes it, makes it. And that'll do it. We'll go to the eighth. Burley has retired everybody he has seen. All right, our Chuck. First pitch strike. Carlos Pena, who was fouled out to Josh Fields at first and grounded out to Beckham at third. They have a shift on. Or the slugger. Five nothing socks. And that has popped up. Come back. Nope. Can't do it. About five rows back. Oh and to the count. Outfield pretty much straight away and very deep all the way around. He gone. Good fastball on the outside corner. Mark Burley hasn't had a whole lot of these today, but he gets the benefit of the call on that one. He cut that fastball, and Payne, you can't believe it. Five strikeouts for Burley. 
And here's Zobrist. He has struck out and grounded to Alexi, who made a nice play on it. Big hack. By the 28 year old out of Eureka, Illinois. Change up high and wide. One and one. Faith foul. It will. Thank you very much. That could have been trouble there. Fortunately, that one got onto the grass, and it's not coming back when it does that. Looked like it might hit that seam, no, and kick it back. So one and two the count. Just got a piece of it. Mark tried to hit him upstairs. And he might have caught a seam. That ball didn't stick in Castro's glove. So Zobris gets another life. Well, I mean, he just barely touched that one. Once again up there, and the count two and two. Didn't get it. Makes it a full count as Mark cuts that fastball inside. Payoff. And that's popped up. Gordon. Two down. He's got a three ball count a couple of times and used that changeup perfectly. Ooh. First pitch strike to Pat Burrell, who's gone out deep to right and struck out. And the count nothing in two. Fans, 28,036, most of them on their feet. That's just foul. Thank you very much. Just foul. That turned around Laz Diaz, and he almost didn't get a good look at it. Then that might have been up to Eric Cooper to make the call, but I'm telling you, that ball was as close as you can get. Line drive down the line, turns around Laz, but he's able to see it. And it was indeed foul, but not by much. You'd have given me that one on the golf course. Just got a piece of that. The change up. That one over, good movement, but too far, way too far outside. The 2 2 pitch. Line drive. Call your sons, call your daughters, call your friends, call your neighbors. Mark Burley has a perfect game going to the ninth.
After the game, stay tuned for U.S. Cellular White Sox Post Game Live. You'll see all the highlights, get Bill Melton's analysis, plus listen in on Ozzy's post game remarks. Don't miss U.S. Cellular White Sox Post Game Live immediately following the game right here on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Dale Thayer comes into the game, and this is his second stint with the Rays. In his Major League debut, he recorded a save. First pitch down low to Carlos Quentin. Five nothing Sox. Five six and zero oh for our Sox. And nobody has reached base for the Rays. As the ball hit high and deep in the center field. Upton is back. One out. Pretty good sign, though, that Carlos might be starting to get his rhythm back again because he's just missing the ball. You gotta figure you're out. As long as he was out, you're not gonna have real good rhythm coming back, but it looks like it's coming to him. Here's Beckham. 0 for 3. Fouls that one back for the Tigers in near half of the ninth inning. The schedule hitters are Kapler, Hernandez, and Barton. <laughs> oh, and to the count. I'd assume we'd see Navarro for Hernandez. He's hitting over 300 right handed. That ball hit into left field. Crawford. Ball got in on it just enough. And that's out number two. So here is Nix. 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch back in the sixth. Just tuning in, Grand Slam homer by Josh Fields in the second, then back to back doubles by Pasednik and Ramirez in the fifth. That's been it for the scoring. The Rays have not had a base runner in this game. And a final from Detroit. Seattle beats them two to one. There's ground to begin. There's a strike. Two and one the count to Jason. <laughs> and it's two and two. We will go to the ninth. Mark Burley working on a perfect game. First pitch outside to Gabe Kapler here in the top of the ninth inning. Some defensive changes. Posednik has shifted to left, and Dwayne Wise has come into the game in center field. Kapler 0 for 2. And the count 1 and 2. Michael Hernandez on deck. And Jason Bartlett in the hole. Up high. Didn't bite. Out in front, yanks it. Way foul. Normally, when a guy gets around that quickly, the change up is forthcoming. That ball hit deep in the left center field. Wise back, back. Makes the catch! 
What a play. Wade Wise makes the catch. What a play by Wise. Mercy. A great catch by Dwayne Wise. It's unbelievable as Wise goes back into the wall knowing he has no room to spare. He goes up over the wall and then juggles it before corralling it. What a play by Wise. Under the circumstances, one of the greatest catches I have ever seen in 50 years in this game. As Hernandez can't get it. Wayne goes up over the wall and then almost drops it. That was incredible. That was unbelievable. Two and one to Hernandez. I don't think Mark Burley can believe it. That's another changeup. He's used it perfectly today, and the hottest hitter on this team stands in between Mark Burley and perfection. Alexei! Yes! 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 History! put him in for defense in the ninth inning shifted Posednik to left field and the first ball looked like it was leaving the ballpark before Dwayne Wise went up over the wall not only caught the ball then juggled it then secured it in his throwing hand just an unbelievable performance by Mark Burley let's go down to Sarah Kustak player of the game. Mark, describe how you feel right now. <laughs> I don't know. I threw a no-hitter. I was surprised as can be when I threw that. Perfect game. It's a, I mean, I threw a no-hitter. is impossible to throw, and here's a perfect game. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Unbelievable. What was going through your mind when you saw Dwayne Wise go up for that catch to get the second out? I was hoping it was staying in here to give him enough room to catch. I mean, I know these guys are out there trying to trying to do everything they can to, to try to save the perfect game, no hitter, whatever it is. So I was just hoping it didn't have enough distance to get out of here. Mark, every pitcher is different. But what were you like throughout each inning in the dugout? Same, I saw you talking a lot to Same the guys, as before. But... I mean, I go up and talk to people. I don't, I'm not big on when the camera goes on you and I sit there and they talk about you. So I take it inside. I don't, I don't like the camera being on me. So I just walk around, talk to the guys, and you know, if it happens, 
happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. Mark, this is something that a White Sox player has not done since 1922. Can you try and wrap up what it feels like to be the player to bring this to these fans into well, the stadium? I don't know if it's really sunk in yet. I mean, I've got a little short flight to Detroit, I'm sure. For us tonight, be pretty hectic, but uh, it'll probably sink in a little bit later. And Mark, you've thrown no hitters before, come very close to this, but have you ever, in your entire career, experienced something that feels quite no? Like this? No, I mean, oh, obviously, winning the World Series just tops anything, but on a personal goal, and then you know, obviously, guys playing defense just, just tops them all. all right, well, it looks like you've got a lot of guys waiting for you. Hawk Stoney, back up to you. All right, Sarah, nice job, honey. Perfect game by Mark Burley and an incredible Stone Pony. An incredible, the best play I have ever seen under those circumstances to save a no-hitter, and in this case, a perfect game. Well, especially, Hawk, when you consider that he's sitting on that bench for eight innings, finally gets a chance to go into the game in the ninth, and he's the guy to go up over the wall to pull it back in and help save the perfect game. Hawk, I have never in my life professionally seen a no-hitter, let alone a perfect game. This is the first time ever, and... Mark Burley was in control from the first pitch on. I think this is my 13th. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, to me, this is the most exciting one I have ever seen, mainly because of the play of Dwayne Wise. I have never seen a play. I have seen a lot of them. I have seen some great plays made to save the no-hitter, but nothing like that catch by Dwayne Wise. Well, there wasn't another tough play besides that no, one. No, that's take, the only you, one in the right, ball game. You take a look at the whole game, Mark Burley was in control. Nobody even had to make a spectacular play. It was just kind of a, a routine place from start to the Dwayne Wise catch in the ninth inning off the bat of Gabe Kapler. And here's pretty much encapsulates what happened. Mark Burley had great stuff, obviously, but he also was staying ahead of most every hitter. And when he did fall behind, one time 3 0 to Bartlett, he came right back and got him. And that's how he ended it. Three times he went to three balls, and three times he went to his best ch uh, pitches. I can't hardly speak now. <laughs> his bread and butter pitch, the changeup. Well, it was terrific today in that he threw that changeup on the outside corner consistently. Couldn't have a better guy than Mark Burley doing it. Not only having the no hitter before, but throwing a perfect game today. I mean, there are so few perfect games thrown in baseball. We got a chance to witness one along with 28,000 some odd fans here. What a thrill today was. And one of the benefits of this victory by the Sox, they move into a tie for first place. Going into Detroit for that doubleheader, that split doubleheader tomorrow, and then Singleton's on Saturday and Sunday. We hope you've enjoyed it. You saw some baseball history today. So for my partner, Former Cy Young Award winner Steve Stone, our Hall of Fame director, Jim Angio, our producer Mike Leary, our associate producer Dave Ross, of course the mayor Mean Joe Group, Mike Mayer, <laughs> Frank D'Amato, Jeff Hilbert. This is the Hawk. Hope you enjoyed it, everybody. Mark Burley with a perfect game.